So we just wrote down all the uh, log identities right here. There's a few other identities we went through earlier, but we're going to use mostly these on uh, the algebra problems we're about to do. So the first few we're going to do are going to be uh, change forms. And then the second half will just be solving. So I want you to write as a sum of logs. So this will be log base 4 of x times square root x squared minus 1. All right, so right as a sum of logs, which rule do we use first? So I see multiplication happening inside. And if we look back at our rules, which rule do we use? 1, 2, 3, or 4 for multiplication inside? Rule 1. So multiplication inside is addition outside. So we're going to use that rule first. So this is log base 4 of x plus log base 4 of square root, which I'm going to write as a half power. All right, so any questions on that first split right there? How do we deal with powers? We're going to look back that one half exponent, which rule deals with powers? So we're going to use rule number three. So we're going to bring that half out as a coefficient. So that one half power. So you've got log base four. You don't have to write the parentheses of x every time. Uh, plus one half times log four of x squared minus one. Now, it may be tempting to break this up over subtraction, but the only two operations you can uh, deal with inside of a log is multiplication and division. So we can't break this apart over subtraction. However, can you factor x squared minus 1? So think of it as x squared minus 1 squared. You have difference of squares, also known as conjugates. So we can factor this out. So this is x minus 1, x plus 1. And now we have multiplication happening inside the log. So now we can split this up. So we got 1 half times log base 4 of x minus 1 plus log base 4 of x plus 1. And you can distribute the half if you want to to both of those. It doesn't matter what form you leave it in, necessarily. Depends on what you're doing. All right, so any questions on that decomposing into several logs? So we'll do one more uh, expansion <laughs> pr problem. So I'll just write log with the base A on this one. So we'll do x over x cubed. And we'll do another square root, x plus 1. All right, so I'll do the first step. There are different ways to break this up, but I will just choose the first way to break this up. So what I'm going to choose is break it up over the division first. So this will use rule number two. We have division inside is subtraction outside. So that's rule number two. So this is log base a of x minus log base a 
of x cubed. And I'm going to write the square root as a 1 half power, because we're about to, later on, break that power uh, out of the log. All right, so I'm going to turn you loose on this problem. But first, I want you to think about this being grouped up. There's really a multiplication happening. So that's the first operation you have to deal with. So split this up over multiplication first, and then use the, the uh, exponent rules. So that's the form it's going to look like. So go ahead and fill in those blanks, and then take those powers out as coefficients. What can I do with those first two terms right there? So we got one of them minus three of them. So I have negative two of them total. So this is minus two log base a of x minus one half log a of x plus one. What, why did it turn into minus one half? So where did this minus one half come from? I see the one half came from the square root, but where did the minus come from? So the minus came from distributing that negative to both the first and the last term right there. Okay. So it's basically minus that whole term right there. All right, let's redo this problem, but think about simplifying first instead of simplifying at the end. So I'll to the alternative solution in purple, or I guess it will probably show up as red or some pink for you. What simplification can I do before I expand this log out? <coughs> Come on, this algebra one cancellation. Oh, you cancel out an x. So there's an x and then three x's. So, or I should say x cubed. So we're going to cancel that. So that's going to reduce to one over x squared square root x plus 1. So right there, you can see this simplification we did at the very end in the logs, you could do at the very beginning right here. Now, <clears throat> you can immediately break this into three different logs. There's two in the denominator, two different products in the denominator, and one in the numerator. So let's, I think I'll have to write a little smaller here. So we have log base A of 1. Now, the other two terms are both in the numerator, so they're both going to be subtracted. So this is minus. log base a x squared minus log base a of x plus 1 to the 1 half power. So anytime you see a denominator, it's going to be subtracted. And from here, I'm just going to do the same thing we did last time, where we bring uh, the power outside. We have minus 2 log a x and minus uh, one half log a x plus one. All right, we can simplify log base a of one. So how do we simplify? Let's go back to what it means to be a log. So some of you already know what this simplifies to. 
For those of you that don't, how are we going to simplify this? I'm going to let some variable equal this. Doesn't matter what variable you choose, just don't use, reuse a. But I could let y equal log a of 1. And the most important thing to remember about logs is definition. How do you go from a log to an exponential or back? So this turns into, move the base to the other side, a to the y equals 1. So what does y have to be? We're assuming a is a good base. So a, uh, y has to be 0. Now if a is not a good base, if a is already 1 itself, then you can't make any determination on the power. But we're assuming whenever I write a as a base, it's always a good base. All right, so y equals 0. That means the original that was equal to 0. So that first term is 0, and of course, it doesn't even need to be written down. And if you look, we get the exact same thing going a very different route at the end. So we get the same thing on the left as we got on the right. So it doesn't matter which way you go as long as you follow the rules. So there's more than one correct way to get to a simplified version. Yep. So that's a good question. Why were, so is your question kind of why are those two negative? So why are these two terms negative? And I'll just put what's relevant on the board. So why are those two subtracted? So if we go up above, we see those are in the denominator. So the reason they're negative is because they're in the denominator. Uh, the, <coughs> the other way I broke it down, I kept them together, so I subtracted their product right here, and then on the next line, I turned it into a sum, but we had to distribute the negative to both. So it has the same effect no matter which of the routes you go. So you may need to spend some time and effort either memorizing these or and doing problems or just doing problems, enough problems so that you eventually just memorize these by doing enough problems. So whatever of those two works for you, either explicitly trying to memorize them and then do problems or just doing enough problems so that these just get ingrained right into your mind. So we're going to do the opposite now. We're going to start with a sum difference of logs and then turn into a single log. And I'll use natural log for these example or for the first example here. Also simplify. <coughs> All right, so if you do not like working with natural logs, that's fine. You absolutely can write log base E. log base e of 8 minus log base e of 5 squared minus 1. I'm going to just work with lns instead of log base e's, but you can write it either way. So if you want it to all look familiar log base with the base every time, you can absolutely write log base e instead of just ln. But I'm just going to save a little time and work just with the, the natural log notation ln. All right, what can I do with the first term? What can I do with the two thirds? Raise eight to the two thirds power. So I can write eight to the two thirds power. So the coefficient becomes an exponent. So I'll write that down. Uh, 
Uh, I could square 5 and subtract 1. That gives me 24. All right, what is 8 to the 2 thirds? Um, so there's two ways to look at this. We just got done with a exponential, a bunch of exponential rules. So we know uh, 2 thirds is 1 third times 2. So I can turn that product uh, 1 third times 2. I can write it as 8 to the 1 third power squared. So that's one way to write it. The other way I could write it is 8 squared to the 1 third power. So either way is completely OK to write it. What is, if we look at the first option, what is 8 to the 1 third power? What number cubed equals 8? Two. Two. 2. So let's go with that first option right there, because that will let me write 8 to the 1 third power is 2 squared. And now, we can't be lazy, I have to write everything else as well, even though that's all we were focusing on. And this is 2 squared. I can just square this out. That's ln 4 minus ln 24. And these are all equal, so I better keep my equal sign around. All right, what can I do now? Natural log 4 minus natural log 24. How do I turn this into a single log? Put 4 over 24. So subtraction outside is division inside. So this is going to be 4 over 24 and the natural log of that. And that's 1 sixth. And that is as simple as we can make this. So this is the last problem we're going to do before we get into actually solving equations. So same instructions, write as a single log. So we got log base a of x plus log base a of 9 minus log base a of 5 minus log base a of x squared plus 1. So I want you to write this as a single log. So take a minute and combine it together as best you can. You don't have to do it the way that I'm doing it here, but it's one way to get uh, a single log. So I see there's two subtracted, so I'm going to factor out that negative sign. Any questions on this fraction right here? You could see that there were two denominator, two terms in the denominator right on the very first step. The last two are subtracted, so you're really looking at two denominators right there. So that's 5 is going to be a denominator, x squared plus 1 is going to also be a denominator. So you can do this in way less steps uh, and get right down to the bottom pretty much right away. 
I see there's an x times 9 in the numerator and a 5 uh, times x squared plus 1 in the denominator. So you can see that pretty much right away. So now we're ready for some solving problems. So we're going to jump into the next section here. This will be 6, 4. So every problem in this section is going to just say solve. So I'm just going to write example, and we'll just be solving. Make sure when you write your logs, especially on the second log right here, what you don't want to do is have lazy bases. So you don't want to write things like that. So my base got a little too big and was written too high. So you don't want to do that. Just like if you're writing exponents, you want to write maybe x squared. This is not a good way to write x squared, for example. You don't want your two, I call it a lazy exponent. It's falling down and it's way too big. So. Be careful when you're writing superscripts and subscripts. Make sure your subscripts are smaller and lower, and your superscripts or exponents are smaller and written higher. So don't get lazy when you're writing, especially in this section. All right, so what am I solving for? X. X, because L and the O and the G are all part of a function, not part of what we're solving for. So we're solving for X. Man. How do I solve for x? x has two friends next to it. It's got that log and it's got the times 2. So when in doubt, when in doubt, you're going to go up. So, so we go asshole sister, md, what is that? My dear, uh, excuse, please. Right, usually we go the other way, but in doubt in algebra, you're going up. All right, so I don't see addition, but I do see multiplication. So how do I get at this 2 out of here? Divide. Divide, there we go. <coughs> There's another way to get the 2 out of there. Turn it into an exponent. Turn it into an exponent. So you have choices now. There are multiple ways to get rid of x's friend, the 2. Uh, either, we're not really actually getting rid of it, we're just changing the form. It's not like I'm erasing the 2. If I divide by 2, it doesn't just disappear. It changes form. So let's write it as an exponent instead of dividing. All right, so we have log 7 of something equals log 7 of something else. So you remember log is an inverse function meaning it's one to one. So what we're looking at is the output of log function equals output of the same function. So I can, because the function is one to one, that means x squared equals nine. So I can basically cancel these functions out. And so what does x have to equal? Three. Or? Negative three. So we got three or negative three. Now, <clears throat> you have to make sure that this solution actually solves your original equation, not just the last equation you wrote down. So is it OK to plug 3 in for x? Yes. So that's positive, so that's OK to plug in. What about negative 3 right there? Domain of logs has to be greater than 0. All inputs greater than 0, so negative 3 is out. So only positive 3 is a proper solution. So we're getting rid of negative 3. It solves the last equation we wrote down, x squared minus 9, but it does not solve the original equation that we were trying to solve. All right, all of you know PEMDAS. I don't need to leave that on the board. All right, let's solve this a little differently. There's two ways to get rid of the 2. One of the ways was divide. So let's go that route. So I'll just rewrite the original. So 
So if I divide by two, I just have log seven of x equals one half log seven of nine. Now because that one half is multiplied there, I can't just say that x equals nine because they're not the same function. So we'll do the same thing we did before by pushing the coefficient inside as a power. So we got log 7x equals log 7 of 9 to the 1 half power. What is 9 to the 1 half power? 3. Oh, it is 3. So we got log 7, 3 equals <laughs> log 7x. So what does x have to equal? 3. x equals 3. So in this way, we didn't generate the extraneous solution. So sometimes you'll go down a path that you'll get an extra solution. Sometimes all paths, maybe there is actually two solutions. So there are plenty of times where both solutions work. Uh, most of the time when you have a plus minus, it'll be the uh, one that's more positive that works. All right, so either way, we've got x equals 3. I probably should write out that theorem. It's really just a, well, it's technically a corollary of log being 1 to 1. But I think it's probably written as a theorem in your book. I'll write it as a corollary. If log a of x equals log a of y, then x equals y. So if you got log base a of a thing equals log a of another thing, then those two things have to be equal. So this is a corollary because uh, the one-to-one -one property. So it comes from the one-to-one -one property, which says if x, f of x1 equals f of x2, when you know your function's one-to-one, -one, that means x1 has to equal x2. So that's what it means for a function to be one-to-one. -one. Your outputs match. They had to come from the same input. So if those outputs match, then the inputs match. That's all that. Corollary is saying right there. So our next example, we have log base 5x plus 6 plus log base 5 of x plus 2 equals 1. So I think all these problems I, we're solving for x. What in the world can I do first? I see x in two places. So how am I going to get x to appear in exactly one place? Addition on the outside is multiplication on the inside. Yeah, so addition outside, multiplication inside. So that's step one. How do we get out of this? So I got log base 5 of this product equals 1. How do I get this log base 5 out of here? Can't divide by log base 5. What's the most important thing I taught you about logs? The definition. So let's use the definition so we can write this as exponential. Usually we're better at exponentials than logs. So you're going to move the base to the other side. So you got x plus 6 times x plus 2 equals, what will be on the right side? Uh, 5 to the 1. 5 to the 1. So the base moves over, and that 1 becomes an exponent. 5 to the 1, that's 5. That's easy. So I'll show you now the wrongest way to solve this. Why is that very wrong? What do I get? If I plug in negative 6, what do I get on the left side? Zero. Zero. And so 0 times uh, negative 4 equals negative 5. 0 times anything is not going to equal negative 5 or positive 5. So this is the absolute worst way to solve this. If I had 0 on the right side, this would absolutely be the solution right here. I do not have 0 on the right side. So I want to caution you. These is absolutely not the right way to 
solve this. And these are very much not solutions right here. How do I solve this correctly? What, what have you been trained to do with that left side right there when you see this in a math class? Foil. Yes, so foil. So I got plus 6x plus 2x is plus 8x plus 12 equals 5. So you can complete the square. You have a quadratic right here. This is Algebra 1 problem now. Well, it was an Algebra 1 problem in the previous step as well. All right, so go ahead and solve for x. You should get two solutions. You want to set it equal to 0 first, right? So, five. yeah, you can't, so you can't set it equal to 0, but you can solve for 0. How do I solve for 0 on the right side? Subtract 5. Subtract 5. So 12 minus 5 is 7. And now, this should look painfully familiar. So now you can definitely tell me the two solutions for x. Complete the square, quadratic formula, or get lucky and factor. I think you got a 7 on, over there, so that's prime. So I would try factoring first. There's not many choices for factoring. So because we ha now have a product that equals 0, that's important that it equals 0, you can use zero product property. So it means one factor is 0 or the other factor is 0. So we got negative 1 or negative 7. So we'll deal with if these are valid or not in a minute, but are there any questions on any algebra questions here? If you went quadratic or complete the square, you should come out with these two numbers. <laughs> All right, we have to make sure we solve the original, not a version that we've written down. The original, make sure you go all the way to the original. Don't go to the you know, first step you did. Go to step zero or the original. All right, is negative one okay to plug in? And I'm looking right here. If I plug in negative one for x, I add six, positive, no problem. Over here, it's a little closer. Plug in negative one, negative one plus two is positive. It works over there also. So x equals negative 1 is a solution. What about negative 7? Nope. Even when I add 6 to it, it's still negative. So negative 7 is very much not going to work. If it fails in only one part of the equation, it's not going to work in the equation. So it, <coughs> negative 7 happened to fail on both of the inputs. But even if it just fails on one of them, it's out. All right, so we got negative 1 as our solution to that. So these questions are ordered, they're, I put them in basically increasing difficulty. So we started out with easier ones and we're getting ones that are more difficult now. So now x is appearing in three places. So there is lots of ways to solve this. <clears throat> what if I wanted to combine the right side? How would I write this difference of logs as a single? X plus 6 over x minus 4. So they'll appear as fraction, so it'll be x plus 6 over x minus 4. Now these are both log with the same base. This is log base E, log base E. So we can use the one-to-one -one property of logs to say their outputs are equal, so their inputs have to be equal. How 
do we solve this? So fractions didn't stop sucking over the weekend. So how do I get out of fraction land? Oh, you're getting very good at that. Multiply by the denominator, and you should have a quadratic. All right, so I want you to tell me you should get two answers out of this. They're not always necessarily going to be real. Sometimes you get complex solution, but do your best to write down both of the two x solutions to this. You're going to have to do a little bit of combined like terms and all that fun stuff. So whenever I have a quadratic, or really any polynomial, I will generally solve for 0. So I'm not setting it equal to 0. I'm solving for 0. So i got to get that x plus 6 out of there. So I just subtracted it. <clears throat> I think I picked these problems so they'd work out really nicely. So I can factor pretty well, but I'm not an expert at teaching how to think about factoring. So the best advice I can give you, I see a minus here. So I need two numbers to multiply that are negative, which means one positive, one negative. And they need to multiply to make 6, and they need to add up to be negative 5. So there aren't too many choices. Basically, 6 and 1, 1 and 6, 2 and 3, 3 and 2. Those are the options. And I think we're going to go 6 and 1 minus 6 plus 1 should do it. So we got minus 6x plus x is minus 5x. So you could absolutely go other routes, but you should get down to the same two solutions. So what do we need to do whenever we started with a log? Yep, make sure we're actually solving the original equation, not just some version that we created down here. So back up in the original, negative 1 is going to fail right on the first part, log of x. So log of negative 1, that's out. So negative 1 is not going to work. And what about positive 6? <coughs> positive 6 works even way over there. 6 minus 4 is still positive 2. So it still works even on that one on the right. So again, usually the solution that's more positive will be the one that works. It won't always be the case, but almost always. So this next example looks incredibly easy. There's not much going on. How do I get rid of, so x has one friend and happens to be a base, which is kind of weird, but how do I get this base out of here? Change it to the log form. So I can't really divide, but I can change it to a log. So rewrite it as a logarithm. So move to the base, uh, base the other side as a log. And that was all we had to do. X is by itself. Now what is log base 3 of 6? 
I don't know, if it was log base 3 of 9, it would be 2, but log base 3 of 6 doesn't have a really nice way to write it. Plug I mean, you, a yeah, you plug it into a calculator, basically. You can write 6 is uh, 3 times 2. So if you want, there are some things you can do without a calculator. Log 3 of 3 plus log 3 of 2. And log 3 of 3 is 1. That still doesn't really help you determine what in the world is log base 3 of 2. You still need to ask your calculator about that. I can tell you it's one more than log base 3 of 6. But that's about all I can really tell you in this form. All right, solve for x in this example. It's similar to the last problem. When in doubt, go up PEMDAS ladder. So if you're not sure how to start, there's no addition subtraction, but take care of that multiplication first. So once we're down to here, we have e to the x equals 5 over 8. You just use the definition of a log to flip this around. So this is x equals log base e of 5 eighths, which of course is natural log of 5 eighths. There's probably no point to split it up as natural log 5 minus natural log 8. I think it's better just leave it the way it is right here. We have two problems left to do. Our f next problem, these do get to be quite a bit more complicated. So why is it incorrect to say the exponents have to match? Because the bases don't. Bases don't. In this problem, there's not a nice way to turn a 5 into a 3. Maybe if it was a 9 and a 3, or a 5 and a 25, I could rewrite one base to be similar to the other. But 5 and 3, there's not a really nice way to rewrite those. What in the world can we do? So on this problem, we, so I could subtract one to the other side. So I could write it as, uh, oops, don't want to use red. So I could write it as 3 to the 3x plus 2 minus 5 to the x minus 2. But the problem is they're not the same base, so I really can't do any, um, there's really no algebra that I can do in this form that I couldn't do in the last form. Uh, I could divide, but then I'd have 1 equals the fraction of these two, depending on which way I divided. So what we're going to do is apply a function to both sides. The function I'm going to apply to both sides, there's two reasonable choices. I could apply log base 5 to both sides or log base 3 to both sides. So why is that going to be a nice uh, move to make? So the identity we're going to use here, log base a of x to the, no, a to the x equals x. So this is the identity that we're going to use here. I think this is from the even two sections ago. But this is the identity we're going to use here. Uh, I think we looked at the identity by bringing the power outside, so it's x times log base a of a. And so if you read this as a log, it says a to what power equals a, and the answer is a to the first power equals a. So this is just x times 1, so this reduces down to x. 
All right, so we're going to use this identity right here. So the two reasonable bases to pick are five or three. What it would be very illegal to do is go log base five So why would this be an illegal move to make? So our bases aren't the same. So another good way to think about algebra, it's like communism. Everybody gets treated the same way. So if I take log 5 of one side, I have to take log 5 of the other. I can't just say oh, log 5 of you and log 3 of the other one. That's not treating them the same way. All right, so we did this. That means the left side log base 5 of 5 to a power just simplifies to that power. So that's the identity that we used that I wrote down right there. We just had base 5, base 5. Unfortunately, the right side doesn't simplify because 5 and 3, there's no common base there. But what can I do with the exponent? You can put it in front. So I put it in front as a coefficient. So I still get to use that property. So I see an x and another x. So I need to get the x's on the same side. The only problem is the one on the right side is multiplied by a really ugly number. So I'm going to take this number and distribute it across the addition. So let's write it as 3 log 5 of 3. This whole thing times x plus 2 log 5 of 3. So how do I get these two x's? How do I solve for x? So we're just combining like terms. So I'll just subtract that ugly log 3, uh, or 3 log 5, base 5 of 3 of x to the other side. So we have x minus that log base 5 of 3 x. And I'm going to add the 2 to the other side. So I just added and subtracted it here. So I'm just combining like terms. I want my x's on one side, my not x's on the other side. What am I doing on the left? I think I parenthesized incorrectly. There we go. All right, we're almost ready to solve for x. What's the last thing, or one of the last things I need to do? How do I make x appear in one place? You could say my favorite f word. Factor. Factor. <laughs> so we're factoring x. We got 1 minus this weird 3 log 5, 3. You could factor a 2 on the right side, but not really <laughs> too important. All right, last step. How do I get x by itself? Divide by, all that. Divide by what we just factored out. Now your calculator can give you a dex, uh, decimal approximation of this. Unfortunately, there's not a nice solution to this type of problem when the bases don't match. You're going to get some weird log hanging around in your solution. I could have gone with log base 3, and it would have been a really similar solution, except it would have canceled on the other side right away.